Hey guys, T Chevy here. How are we doing today? So we got the worst cards in Yu-Gi-Oh 6. How are we on number 6? How can there be that many bad cards in this game? Turns out 90% of cards in this game are god awful. However, there are some cards in this game that are so bad that I can make videos about them until the end of time. So today we're going to come at you with four, count it, four cards that I've chosen out. Uh, a couple of them have been picked out by you guys from the previous video. However, I went out of my way and looked up a couple as well. And of course, I managed to find four uh, really, really awful cards which I want to talk about today and uh, add it to the roster of previous videos of this playlist. So if you want to go and check out the actual list of the worst cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, go and check out the card. Little I button that's up there. I'm going to try and grab it, but I can't. Uh, you go and click that and click the little playlist and it'll take you to all the previous videos of the last couple of years that I've made on the matter. So the first one is Guarded Treasure. Now this card came out in Dragons of Legend, which was about a year and a bit ago. It's a continuous spell where at to activate this card by discarding five cards and then you draw two cards. While this card is on the field, draw two cards instead of one for your normal draw during your draw phase. Right. The reason why this card is god awful is because of the fact that it's a continuous spell. And the fact that discarding five cards is a cost to activate the card's effect. So, you can't activate this card on your first turn, okay? Because we only start with five cards in hand, it going first, you can't activate this card on your first turn anymore. It used to be the case, but now that you can't. What that means is that you have to use this card going second at the very earliest. Which means that um, you discard five cards, which leaves you with absolutely nothing, because this is your sixth card. Sixth, discard five, draw two cards, right? Oh, I'm back up to two cards in hand. Okay, so you had six cards in hand, and now you now you have two. So you need to be drawing two cards instead of one every draw phase, which means that it will take you three or four turns for you to get a return on this investment. That is the one, the first reason why it's really really bad because it takes so many turns for you to actually gain a return on this investment. And the other reason why it's terrible is because MST is a card. If you if your opponent MSTs this card on activation and you are forced to discard your entire hand, you lose the game. That's it. You lose the game. You can't, you lose everything because the discards don't trigger off Dark World, for example. Um, there's no way to gain any advantage from this card. You don't even get to draw the two cards. So once you activate it, the MST, you discard your whole hand, you don't get to draw two. There's no more drawing two in your draw phase. There's absolutely nothing. So you are absolutely fucked. Okay, that's the reason why this card is so awful. It's because it's an all or nothing card. And if you know your opponent's not playing MST, this card is still not that good because it takes three or four turns, your turns, you know, eight turns in total, for you to get a return on your investment. And even then, you're only drawing two cards instead of one, because every card in this game fucking searches itself, or it searches each other. So at this point, you can gain plus twos every turn by your own means. You don't need to use a card like Guarded Treasure to actually gain any advantage anymore, because it's actually pointless to not just use a deck that actually gains advantage by itself. I mean, ne Necros of Valkyries doesn't need to do that, and yet it draws two. You know, it's like, okay, dude. Um, next one is House of Adhesive Tape, which came out a really long time ago. If the defense of a monster summoned by your opponent, excluding special summons, so we say normal or flip summoned, or tribute summoned, is 500 points or less, the monster is destroyed. So while this card has a lot of targets, the fact is that this card is outclassed by almost everything else in the game. Um, anything higher than level 6, you can use a specific trap hole for it. Anything higher than 2000, you can use a specific trap hole for it. Anything that is 1500 or higher and you want to destroy and banish it, we have a specific trap hole for this. So this card is not even searchable and it doesn't actually doesn't actually banish anything and it doesn't actually the amount of targets it has is so much fewer than every other trap card that we have in the game which does a very similar purpose. So the fact is that this card is power creeped out to the point where you look at it now and I'm just like, oh my god, this card is god awful. And yet Konami insists on forcing this card into your deck whenever you play one of their video games. If you play one of their games and they go, oh here's a warrior deck to get you started, they chuck this card into your trap lineup. Next card on the list is Goblin out of the frying pan, which was suggested at least two or three times over the last few volumes of this of this thing. So a counter trap card which you can pay 500 life points and to negate the activation of a spell card and return it to the owner's hand. Wait what? Return to the owner's hand. So a spell card which plays on their turn 
you negate it, then it puts it back in their hand. What is the benefit from doing this? I don't understand. I mean, I don't understand how this card was ever printed. I mean, I understand. Okay, I can understand the reason why you would want to use it. And there's only one reason. And it's because your opponent may end up activating a spell card with a very, very, very high cost. And therefore, returning the card to their hand forces them to play it again, which means that they'll have to pay the cost twice. So Lightning Vortex, discard a card, you negate it, it puts it back in their hand. However, why would you still want to do that over just negating it? Well, how is this card better than Dark Bribe? How is this card better than Magic Drain? How is this card better than almost anything else in this game? Like, Golden Out of Fire Pan, it doesn't even need to be a counter trap, okay? Because you don't need to be able to counter trap over a spell card. So you, it's just like it's it's just like an, a be or end or, you know, and that's it. So. <laughs> It's just so bad. It really is. I mean, I just, I'm struggling to find reasons why it's so bad other than the blatantly obvious fact that it's completely outclassed by so many cards and the fact that it returns to the hand. It's like the complete, it negates advantage to the point where you're basically just shooting yourself in the mouth. Like, oh, Goverin, absolutely Goverin. And then you just, you know, it comes out the back, you know, because you clearly return it back into your head again. Because that's what this deck, this card fucking does, you know. Okay, last card. Spell Reproduction. Okay, we actually do have a much better version of this card in the actual game. But this card is also existing as well. And it was played in the original Dual Monsters anime. Send two spell cards from your hand to the graveyard. Then target one spell card in your graveyard and add that target to your hand. So if this card gets negated, you do lose two spell cards in your hand, including this. So you're basically discarding three, it gets negated, it's over, right? However, you can get a spell card back to your hand with this, which is very, very good. However, we do have Magical Stone Excavation, which doesn't need to specify two spell cards that you have to send. So you can discard two cards and get back a spell card, which is really, really great. But Spell Reproduction is exactly the same, except it forces you to have to use discard spells instead of any card at all. So you can't use it with some kind of thing like Dandelion, you can't use it with Burning Abyss. Spell Reproduction forces you to discard very, very important cards from your hand, which you don't want to discard. You don't want to discard your Dark Holes, your Rygekis, your MSTs, your Pot of Avarice, your, you know, your Salvage, your, I don't know, whatever card that you play in your deck. You don't want to be sending those to the grave to get one of them back. You know, you want your spell cards to be expendable in your deck so that when you use them, they get very, they're very powerful and they do what they do. Simply put, if you want to play this card, just play the better version of it instead and there will be no questions. No one's going to ask you what you're doing with yourself. So just play the better one and you don't have to worry about that. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the four cards today. Uh, comment down below your opinions. Definitely comment down below new cards that uh, you think should be on the worst cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! list. I hope to hear from you guys in a few days. So thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, the Tishi Lover is out.